Mr. McCoy back with part two of Mystery of the Egyptian Scroll. As you recall, a boy named Zeth had tracked a man named Pattis to his house because he suspected him of being a thief. Pattis held up a calloused hand. Uh, I'm coming to that. It started when I was leaving my field. I was walking through my reeds, slowly checking for insects and rot, that sort of thing. They're very tall this time of year, much taller than I am. I overheard a man talking. I was surprised because few people just wander into my plot. He shrugged. There's no reason to. There's nothing worth stealing, and it's not particularly interesting, unless you're a farmer. He took a deep sip of water, then set his cup down. As I said, I heard voices. Uh, given the thick vegetation, I couldn't see who was speaking. But I did hear one man say, Now that we have the building plans, we're set. All you need to do is to make sure our buyer is at... Pattis paused and color suffused his cheeks. At what? Seth said. That's the problem. I don't know. He ran a hand over his head. Frustration was clear on his face. That's the last I heard. I was so stupid to let them see me. I didn't think. I, I just stepped out into the open. And they stopped talking. Zet groaned. If Pattis had held back just a little longer, they'd be able to solve the case. I know, Pattis said, as if reading Zet's thoughts. What did they look like? Zet asked. One was quite fat, a large man with a short beaded wig, wealthy, rings on every finger, and in one hand he had what looked like a large scroll wrapped in leather. A scroll? The building plans they were talking about, Anna said? Exactly, Pattis said. But building plans for what, I don't know. What about the other man, Seth said. Uh, you said there were two. Yes. Uh, the other one was tall and thin and bony with a long neck. He looked like a boiled chicken, if you know what I mean. Zet grinned at this description. So what happened after they saw you? I looked at them, and they looked at me. And the fat one shouted, Get it! Well, I could have told them they were trespassing, but they didn't seem like a good idea because the thin one pulled out a knife. I didn't wait to find out if he planned to use it. I just started running. I ran for town, hoping I'd lose them in the alleys. So then, why were the Medjay chasing you? I think the big man must be some kind of official because a Medjay recognized him and he yelled that I was a thief and that I'd stolen something. I was lucky to make it home. Zet nodded. It had been close. It's good you're a fast runner. That won't do me much good now, though. I'm afraid to leave my house. They've seen me. They've seen me in my face. You know what happens to thieves. And if he's official and it's state business, it's death for certain. But if I don't leave home, how can I tend my fields? Anna looked stricken. But, but you're innocent. Zet jumped to his feet. That reminds me, you'd better bring your sandals inside. Why? Pattis jumped up, hearing the warning in Zet's voice. So you know, why would Zet give Pattis this warning about bringing the sandals inside? Share with your fellow listener. Zet was closer to the door. He ran for it. I told the Medjay the man they were chasing had mismatched sandals, he told Pattis. Throwing the curtain aside, Zet snatched them up. Barely had he done so when a Medjay turned into the alley. Zet clutched them to his chest. The Medjay glanced curiously at Zet. Good morning, the Medjay said. His muscled shoulders shone with sweat. Good morning, Zet replied. Uh, just uh, getting my sandals here. Those look a little big for your feet, boy. Oh, yes, growing into them. The Medjay stopped and scanned Zet's face more closely. Do I know you? You look familiar. Uh, me? Oh, just his luck. That was the thing about working in the market. People sometimes recognized him. I don't think so, the man grunted. After a moment, he said, have a nice day, and he kept going. Zet let out a huge sigh of relief and slid back into the house. Just on time, he said, handing them to Pattis, but keep them inside until the real thieves are caught. I don't see how that will happen, Pattis said, rubbing his neck. I'm going to solve this mystery, that's how, Zet said. Pattis shot him a typical adult look, one with doubt written all over it. 
I, I, I found you, didn't I? Zet said. I'm already ahead of the Medjay. Well, that's true. Zet said his goodbyes and told them he'd return with any good news. He left, pondering all the things he'd learned. When he reached his market stall, Cat was nearly frantic. You've been gone forever. He pulled her back into the shadows. You won't believe what I've learned. Crouching behind the tall piles of stacked clay pots, he told Cat everything that had happened. Her look of terror when he told her about Paddish yanking him through the door was definitely satisfying. She whacked him when she realized he was scaring her on purpose. When she knew everything, she sat back, looking thoughtful. Let's take stock of everything we know so far, she said, reaching for her brush and ink. Why? It's not like I'm going to forget. She found a scrap of broken pottery and pulled out the cake of ink because it might be helpful. Maybe we'll get some more ideas. Cat mixed the ink with a little water and dipped the brush. Go ahead, tell me what to put first. Zet told her and she began to write. When she finished, the list looked like this. Who? Man number one has a big belly and wears gold rings. Man number two is tall and thin, looks like a boiled chicken. Where? Pattis' papyrus plot. What? Large leather wrapped scroll with building plans on it. Zet's heart leapt looking at the list. We know a lot. A lot more than the Medje, Kat said. Uh, do you think he'll pay for this list? Zet considered it. Possibly, but I told you I'd bring him the thief. Well, did you get any other ideas while I was writing? Maybe we should write what to do next. Uh, how about look for the two men and then figure out why building plans are important? Uh, Kat added them both. That's a good question. How could building plans be so important? Is it for a new building, I wonder? They pondered this, both lost in their own thoughts. Overhead, the sun god Ra was nearing the end of his daily voyage across the sky. Soon he would reach the horizon. Sunlight slanted across the rooftops. It bounced off the copper plates in the market stall across the way. The stall owner sang as he gathered them up and stacked them in two locked trunks for the night. Uh, we better pack up too, Zet said. They draped their pots up with linen cloths and tied the linen down. It wasn't the most secure way of closing shop, but they couldn't exactly carry everything home. And it's what their family had always done. So far, they'd been lucky. People respected the market at night and Medjay had a habit of crossing the square frequently, knowing it was full of goods. The date seller left just as they did. Good night, Saladas, Zet called. Meddlesome boy, Saladas complained. Uh-oh, Zet said to Cat, I guess he's not too happy with me. He'll get over it, the old grump, Cat said. He hoped Cat was right. He didn't like the idea of having an enemy, especially one in his market. On their way home, Zed and Cat kept an eye out for the two men Pattis had described. They passed dozens of people, a scribe with a sack of writing tools, a barber with a box of razors and shaving oils, a woman carrying a baby in one arm and leading a goat with the other. But none of them matched the description Pattis had given. Do you like to solve mysteries like uh, Zet and Cat do? Share your experiences with your fellow listener. Soon, Zet could see their doorway up ahead. Cozy lamplight spilled through the front window into the narrow street. The air smelled of rich stew and baking bread. Zet's stomach roared with hunger. He turned to his sister and said, Let's not tell mother about this, all right? She frowned. Why not? You mean lie? I didn't mean lie. I mean, just don't mention it. I'm not going to keep things from her. Why should I? First, she'd probably think it was interesting, and second, and second, she'd think it was dangerous. That's what she'd think, and she'd tell me not to do it. Well, then maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should be focusing on the stall instead of wasting time chasing after a thief. That's the Medjay's job. Zet stared at her open mouth. You were excited about it before. Yes, well, that was before I had to keep it all secret. Cat, mother, was barely out of bed since she gave birth. She's finally up and well enough to get around a little. I don't want to worry her. 
But this Deben could mean a lot. Think of it. We need it. She stared at him with the stubborn set of jaw he hated. I am thinking of it. You'll be all running around on some wild chase, and I'll be at the stall alone. And it's hard enough getting customers with the two of us. I'll do both. I promise. I'll figure out a way. Cat's lip jutted out a little, and she wound her braid around her fist. He could tell she was beginning to waver. Just one day, he said quickly, tomorrow, and if I can't figure out any more clues, we'll forget it. Deal? Cat blew out a breath. She glanced at their home and back at Zed again. Fine, he grinned, elated. But just until tomorrow, she said, rolling her eyes at his victory dance. Over dinner, the mystery was temporarily forgotten. The family sat comfortably on overstuffed cushions before a low table. Lamplight danced on the whitewashed walls. Zet, Cat, and his mother talked and laughed. It felt so good to see their mother back to her old self again. Their baby brother, Apu, earned the most attention. He was trying to walk. The three cheered him on. The baby rewarded them by taking his first three unsteady steps. Then he squealed with delight and fell over. Everyone wanted their turn to give him a hug of congratulations. Later, while everyone got ready for bed, Zet knelt before the household shrine. Their statue of Bastet, the cat goddess, was small but made of the finest ebony. She had been the household god of his father and his father's father before that. The statue had been handed down from father to son for many generations. One day it would be his. Age had softened her features. He lit a stick of incense and prayed for her to help in finding the thieves. Because it's not right to steal and Pata shouldn't have to live in fear for something he did not do. He rubbed Bastet's carved ebony head. Even though she was a statue, he felt sure she enjoyed it. He climbed up to the rooftop. During the very hot months, he and his sister liked to bring their sleeping pallets up there where it was cooler. Zet lay down under the vault of stars. For a long time, he tossed and turned. Finally, he pushed the linen sheet from his shoulder and sat up. Are you still awake? He whispered to Cat. Yes, she mumbled. I want to go to the papyrus field. There might be a clue we're missing that the men left behind. Good idea, as long as you get up early and go before work. No, I'm going right now. What if those men go back to check and make sure they didn't leave anything? How do you think Cat will reply to this suggestion? Share with your fellow listener. And now, moments more of Mystery of the Egyptian Scroll. Cat struggled upright. He could see her staring, wild-eyed in the moonlight. That's exactly why you shouldn't go tonight. It's too dangerous. I'll be careful, he said. He pulled on his kilt. I'm coming with you, Cat said. Forget it. Like you said, it's too dangerous. She fastened her hair behind her neck in a low ponytail. That's exactly why I'm coming. Someone has to keep an eye out while you search. And we'll find out what happens next to Zet and Cat as... Mystery of the Egyptian Scroll continues.